Hey, what's up? I'm Cody the Coin Raptor, and in today's video, I want to talk about whether or not I think Bitcoin has bottomed. Now, as always, do your own due diligence, and this is not financial advice. It took me some time to put together this data and make this video, so I would greatly appreciate it if you could smash that like button and subscribe to see all my new videos before anyone else. First, some background on how long it took Bitcoin to bottom in previous bear market cycles. Now, in the bear market of 2011, it took about 108 days to bottom. The bear market of 2013 to 2015 took 413 days to bottom. The bear market of 2018 to 2019 took 364 days to bottom. The, and the COVID flash crash took about 28 days. Finally, if the current low holds, it will have taken 376 days for Bitcoin to bottom. However, if this isn't the bottom, that means in another 17 days, the current market will have taken the longest in Bitcoin's history to bottom. But if we go with the assumption that the bottom is in, we will have come right in with the other long Bitcoin bear markets. So about right in that average. Finally, let's look at the maximum decline in price. So 20, 2011 was an 85% drop in price. 2013 to 2015 was an 86% drop in price. 2018 to 2019 was an 84% drop. 2020 was a 62% drop. And the current peaked trough decline is about 75%. Lower than we would imagine for a bear market, but higher than 2020. If the bottom is in, this shallower decline, I think, would be due to the larger number of long-term holders. OK, long term holders, in this case, those who have held more than 155 days have gained market share in Bitcoin. Now, this is important because long term holders are much less likely to capitulate and sell their Bitcoin. In the past, it would be rare to see to see long term holders account for 80 percent of Bitcoin. But it has been the norm over the last year. And that's something you can see here in the price. You'll notice that the blue here is the long-term holder supply, whereas the red is the short-term holder supply. And if I get rid of the red, we can see here that the long-term holder supply has been a sh in a steady uptrend. And again, above that 80% number has been fairly rare. But in the last year or so, it has actually been fairly common. Okay. However, that being said, I'm not yet ready to call this the bottom for several reasons. Okay, interest rates are still rising. Most likely we'll see a 50 basis point rate hike next week. More to follow on that in tomorrow's video. U.S. is in a recession or close to one. Thus, people won't have the investing money they normally would. There could also be more crypto contagion from the FTX collapse. With how huge FTX was, we are bound to see more damaging effects to other companies and crypto firms. There's also miner selling pressure. So miners have been under pressure and will continue to be as long as the price stays low. And then there are always some wild card events or some wild card mass liquidation uh, possibilities. That includes both Mt. Gox's Bitcoin settlements of about 141,000 Bitcoin or the U.S. or China liquidating their seized Bitcoin. The U.S. has about 21,000 Bitcoin, and China has 194,000 Bitcoin that they have seized. All right. Also, here's a fantastic chart that was posted by uh, Jaron Mellerud on Twitter. So this chart shows that the current complete bear market cycle is still pretty short compared to 2017 and 2013. It shows the entire drawdown and how long it took Bitcoin to return to previous highs. So as you can see here, we are still quite a ways off. Now, we're at about 370 odd days or so, and this goes all the way up to almost 1,100 days. So again, this is the full bear market cycle here, and not just how long it took to get to the bottom, all right? So the way I see it is the most likely bottoming time frame is going to be two to six months from now. The Fed is going to pivot sometime in the next six months and much faster if the recession gets worse. I expect the rest of 2023 remains challenging for so-called risk assets. Bitcoin is more likely to move sideways until 2024 when the next halving happens. 
Now, I have a projection up here of basically, this is just a very rough draft, uh, an illustration of what I think it could potentially look like. And so what you have here is a, a range of dates in which the Fed could be lowering rates here. And I've kind of drawn in here at the top, this orange line here could be the Fed funds rate getting fairly high and then coming back down again. And then we could see a bottoming of the Bitcoin price just as the, as the Fed rate uh, hits the terminal value. And then as soon as it starts to come down, we can wind up seeing a pretty big rise in the Bitcoin price. Now, again, this is just a very rough draft. It's kind of a rough estimate to kind of show my point here. Uh, but this is my best guess of what's going to happen. I could entirely be wrong here, but I'm trying to give it my best possible guess. And so the future is incredibly murky. There's a lot of different things that could throw monkey wrenches into these projections. It's entirely possible that it's that it's wrong, right? But the conclusion is this. Trying to time the bottom is almost impossible. Every time you think that it's a, a bottom, potentially speaking, it could reverse and then even go back lower. So it could be a fake out to the top or fake out to the bottom. So this is why the, I, I feel like the best strategy for myself is to continue with a Bitcoin DCA strategy and not try to time the absolute market bottom. Because as I said before, it can be incredibly difficult to predict. And even going back and taking a look at 2018, 2018 is a great example here. I'm going to get rid of this. 2018 is a great example where many people probably thought that they hit the bottom here as soon as they came down here at about 6,100, only for there to be a final capitulation event which drove the, which uh, took the price down from 6,300 all the way down to 3,200. So that was another complete 50% decline, right? And then after that, you get a nice reversal all the way up here. But again, this is my best guess, guys. And, um, and that's basically all I've got for you guys today. If you like this content... Let me know, and please remember to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter for the most up-to-date information. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be coming out with a video talking about the week ahead, which includes some pretty intense events and uh, some events that could shake up Bitcoin and the crypto market. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure to hit that sub button, and you will see it as soon as I put it out. All right, this is Cody the Coin Raptor, and I hope to see you in the next video.